Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. Welcome back. Last week, we had simple ways to improve your bench, but clearly that didn't work for you because you're back next week. This week, for the advanced stuff, let's get into advanced periodization to increase your bench. And I will say, I would go back, if you haven't, and watch the simple tips video just to make sure you're green checkboxing all the stuff. Because if the simple stuff hasn't been done yet, a lot of times the advanced stuff doesn't work all that well. Or it's just, uh, put another way, it's much easier to do the simple stuff and get really big fixes. If you've exhausted the simple tricks and they don't work anymore, or if you want to apply the simple tips in a more structured manner, this is the video for it. So I would say watch that video first. Benefits is you learn more stuff and also gives me more Lamborghini money. And uh, then we can all be on the same page. So the sequence to improving your bench press is almost identical to that for improving your squat and will be almost identical for future weeks to improving your deadlift. And it is as follows. You find the limiting factors in your bench press. You do hypertrophy work to increase the ability of those limiting factors, the smaller muscles that are pulling your weight, so to speak. Then you do a strength phase. Then you do a peaking phase. You test your max. Great success. Your max is improved. Back to the drawing board and repeat the process. So limiting factors. Questions for you at home to figure out what to work on for your bench. Do you miss your benches at the chest or very close to the chest? Hold that thought. Do you miss the benches at just a bit above the chest where you would stop a spoto press, for example? Google that shit. Or third, do you miss your bench halfway up or higher? Anywhere here or closer to lockout? Usually, you'll be missing benches, most of them in just one specific area. I mean, it's not like you miss some benches at the chest and some benches almost at lockout. Most people, individuals at any one time in their training career, will typically miss the vast fraction of their benches at one and not the other two of those heights. So that's a big deal. In addition to that, if you don't train to failure all the time, or if you haven't, you know, flubbed any 1RM attempts, where the bench gets disproportionately harder for you works the same. So instead of, do you miss your benches at the chest or very close? Is it that at the very bottom, it's really tough. And then as you push out, it gets much easier. Or is it pretty easy at the bottom Then you hit a slowdown at the low point midway and then it's easier? Or is it one of these things that it's not terrible from the bottom, but then you get up to close to lockout and you have a really, really hard time? Based on where the difficulty is, you apply the same logic as is based on where the failure point is. Same, same. Now, here's the thing. The likely causes, or at least the possible causes, which we're going to attack here, are as follows. If you're missing your bench at the chest or, you know, just lower down than that normal sticking point of two or three inches up, chest size and strength is probably a limiting factor for you. And if you had a bigger, stronger chest, you could probably miss your benches at another place, but miss them at higher weights, so you'd be stronger. If you miss your benches just a little bit above the chest, a couple inches above the chest, that's where biomechanically you should be missing benches if you're built like the average person. So your overall pushing strength is a limiting factor, which means we can steer a program to attend to that. And if you are in a situation where you're missing your benches halfway up, past the midway point or higher, then tricep strength is more likely to be something that you are missing out on. And then increasing the size and strength of your triceps is probably priority number one. So for yourself, figure out which one of these is closest to your situation and then go from there. Now, after that, you figure out, let's say, oh, chest is what is really limiting me on bench because I fail at very low position in my bench press. You're going to design a program that trains limiting factor movements and muscles first or early in the program and slightly more often. So you're going to be doing chest work early in your program and a lot of chest work throughout the week, for example. You will still fit in tricep work and overall pressing work. You'll still do the rest of your program, but just less. Because if you do more of one thing, you usually have to do less of another because your recovery ability is finite. And what you're going to do is you're going to construct these mesocycles, these training programs to put some fucking meat on your chest or triceps or overall, whatever it is that you were sort of diagnosed with in that first part. And you're going to increase the size of those muscles preferentially over multiple mesocycles of training, mostly in the five to 10 repetition range in a variety of exercises that target those muscle groups. That's going to be sweet. You're going to have much bigger and actually much stronger ability to press. Then 
you're going to enter a strength phase because you want to express yourself optimally and actually make the muscles stronger as well as bigger. You're going to switch around at that point to doing much more bench pressing first because strength phase, it's time to get stronger on the bench. And that means you need to practice fresh with the bench press more often, the actual competition lift. You're going to keep that limiting factor training and keep it hard, still plenty of intensity, still plenty of volume, not as much as before, but you're still going to gain lots of strength in the chest specifically or the triceps specifically or all around. You're still going to gain even a little bit of size, but for the most part, you're going to be doing this three to six rep range, basic strength for the presses. And for some of the assistance work like flies, which you can't go that heavy, it's not super safe. Then you do in the sets of five to eight right, in that rep range. Once you get done with a strength phase, you will get into a peaking phase where you have heavy core work of your actual lifts and you have some accessory volume. After a few weeks, your accessory volume declines and falls off. After a few more weeks, your core volume starts to decline. That's called a taper. It reduces fatigue while your fitness stays constant or actually goes up a little bit. Fitness minus fatigue is preparedness. Your abilities go up. You do a one rep max test and voila, your bench has improved. So as a sample program, let's just say you miss benches like at the bottom or very close to the bottom of the chest. And we think, ooh, your pecs could be bigger and stronger and that would really help you in the bench press. All right. So here's the thing. How would we do this? By the way, another test, just a random little tidbit for you guys, another test of if it's your chest or your triceps that's a limiting factor is find out what people of your relative strength typically do for close grip bench, full range of motion, and for regular bench and see where your close grip is relative to your regular. If your close grip sucks compared to your regular, then your chest is not a limiting factor, most likely, because your triceps are relatively weaker. If your close grip is outlandishly higher than average, but your bench press itself isn't that great, it's your pecs that are probably limiting factors. So that's another interesting way to corroborate that and find that out. But let's say you say, you conclude, okay, I need, I need more chest stuff. It's the chest that's limiting factor. Your hypertrophy mesocycles could look something like this. Three days of press training, Day one, you do a lot of sets of five to seven reps on the heavier end of the hypertrophy range and wide grip presses, do a little bit of tricep work after. Remember, triceps are on the back burner this entire time. Sets of eight to 10 on day two and wide grip incline and flat flies, more pec work, just a bit of a different angle for variation, a little bit of triceps after. Day three, you're gonna do a technique slash recovery day Lots, or not lots, a few sets of three to six repetitions in the competition bench with a pause, keeping those motor patterns fresh, so you're really good at benching itself. You never forget how to bench. Really good technique, pause at bottom, that's it, leave the gym. Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for example. By next Monday, because that Friday was super easy, you'll be really healed and be able to get a lot out of that day one. Day two, you'll still be a little bit messed up from day one, a little bit tired, but notice the repetition ranges are higher and the movements are different. So it might inter not interfere with your workout a ton. That's a really good thing. In, in Monday, Wednesday, Friday is a great way to do this. It also, Monday, Thursday, Saturday is a great way to do this because Saturday, if you do the really light benches for a few sets of three to six reps, it's not a big deal and you'll recover no problem by Monday. So that's another way to conceive of it. That way, Monday to Thursday gives you more time to recover from those mega workouts. Strength meso could look something like this. The first meso cycle, which is a little bit of a lighter meso, the second meso will be heavier. Day one is you start with five to six sets in the wide grip press. We're still prioritizing the chest specific movements first. They're first in the week. Day two is some tricep work after that, no big deal. Day two, five to six repetition range sets in the competition bench, now getting stronger at the very thing you want, sets of five to eight reps and dumbbell flies after, still kicking it to the chest like we promised, a little bit of triceps. Day three, same as always, light work with a competition bench, sets of three to six, maybe three to five sets of three to six reps at like 50% of one rep max, easy work, technique only. Gets you a great recovery, great technical training, all good things. Sets up another excellent week of pressing work. Mesocycle two of your strength work, getting you ready for peaking, is going to look a little bit different. Day one is sets of three to four in the paused competition bench. Now, we have fully transitioned to being like, okay, this is specific training for that movement. And it's your first time going really heavy in that movement as well in quite some time. A little bit of tricep work after that. Day two, it's all right there, sets of five to six in the wide grip bench. Still maintaining that wide grip ability to increase our chest strength 
and some sets of wide grip incline bench, also sets of five to six. And all of a sudden your pressing is as much better, but we're doing more core pressing and less flies and stuff like that. Really transferring our work into compound pushing. Day three, same as it was this entire program, easy work, sets of three to six, competition bench. Lastly, peaking mezzo, day one would be sets of singles and doubles in your actual bench stuff, very easy tricep work after, competition benching. Day two, sets of three to four with a pause, competition benching, slightly more volume, a bit more of a strength stimulus in that peaking paradigm, and a bit of wide grip benching and sets of five to eight and a little tricep work after. Right, still, we know chest is a limiting factor. We're still trying to bang that out as close to the peak as we can. Now, after a few weeks, about two weeks, you pull that wide grip work altogether. You pull it out of the program so that your body begins to heal much faster than it was being stimulated. Your fitness no longer goes up. It stays flat, but your fatigue starts to fall. And a week or two after that, you start to reduce the volume on actual bench press lifts. You do a taper, a little deload at the end, Try your max, and it'll almost certainly be better. The real core here is to pick good movements that fit your needs. If your chest is weak, pick the chest movements and just add five pounds to them every week. Try to maintain those reps where they are. When you get tired, deload, repeat. With this paradigm and this structure, this is my best guess at how to increase your bench. And if it doesn't work, just throw something at the stupid fucking TV. If you watch me on your television, of course, if you're watching me on your cell phone, just crush the thing. But hopefully you're on a subway so someone sees that and they're like, <gasps> and you're like, don't worry. I'd never do this to a human or all of them at once. That's always convincing. Folks, see you next week for more insights, probably on deadlifting, if I had to guess. Peace.